from Krimu Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The South African National Space Agency has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the NEPAD Agency. Keith Campbell reports. In April, the South African National Space Agency, or SANSA, signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the NEPAD Planning and Coordination Agency. Raoul Hodges, Managing Director of SANSA Space Operations Directorate, explains the significance of this MOU. I think when, when uh, the, 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 the purpose of the MOU was to show our willingness to uh, get involved in the African space industry um, and help Africa uh, to become uh, its own player, specifically when it comes to food security, water, uh, sanitation, housing, um, all those things are things that NEPAD look at. Um, and with satellite technology today, those are the typical things uh, that uh, we can help uh, and drive within the Africa con uh, uh, continent. Um, and that's the purpose of the MOU with uh, NEPAD, is to, it's not to play the big brother, but to show that the technology we're using in South Africa can be used in Africa, and uh, we believe it can resolve a lot of issues. Uh, and take us on a road forward with, with the African continent. For Sansa Space Operations, the past year has been an active one. Hodges tells us more. We've done just around about 40 maneuvers or space maneuvers, uh, f which relate all the way from launches to in-orbit testing, uh, to um, space drifts, uh, and uh, new satellites, uh, which are electric propulsion. So um, it's been a bumper year for us. Uh, in terms of work and technology. Space drift or drifting a satellite is when we take a satellite from one slot to another slot. Uh, typically they do it when they, I, there's a shortage of bandwidth or uh, transponder space uh, in another region. Um, and they will do it to be able to take uh, the satellite for a shorter period if there is no satellite available or there's a time uh, problem. Uh, of getting a new satellite into an orbit uh, and they normally do it with an older satellite um, so that they don't expand too much fuel uh, and they know that the satellite's on its way out. Le electric propulsion is a new trend in, in satellite builders building. The first thing is that a satellite weighs about a third less because it doesn't have the uh, propulsion on board and they use electricity to propulse it. The challenge though is, is to get it into an orbit uh, with electric propulsion. It takes much longer than uh, with fuel propulsion and therefore you take around about six months to drift it uh, with electric propulsion into an orbit. So w w what it does save on is weight first of all and it gives you the ability to put more transponders on the spacecraft if need be. It also gives you the opportunity to have a cheaper launch. If you lose a third of your weight uh, of your satellite uh, you have a smaller spacecraft uh, and it's a cheaper ride uh, into the geostationary orbit. Other news making headlines this week, Davies promises support for downstream firms as he confirms steel safeguard duty. Speaking in Johannesburg at the release of the 9th Industrial Policy Action Plan, Trade and Industry Minister Dr. Rob Davies reiterated the importance of sustaining a primary steel industry, which had come under intense pressure as a result of the current global oversupply of steel. Let me start off by saying, without any ambiguity, without any apology, that IPAP is intended to contribute to radical economic transformation. And let me be very clear about what we mean by that. And I want to say that, at its simplest, this means that IPAP must contribute to the achievement of two components simultaneously and interconnectedly. First of all, it's got to contribute to bringing about radical change in the structure of our economy. And in particular, to contribute to bringing about structural change that reduces our dependence as an economy on the industries and sectors that uh, we were consigned to under colonialism as a producer and exporter of primary commodities. I think that we know that uh, this is the least lucrative part 
of any value chain. And in fact, if you look at developments which are taking place uh, in uh, the global economy and in global value chains now, you will see that the value of a finished product that is constituted by the raw material that is included in it is both the most minor part of the final product and in fact is also a diminishing percentage of the value <coughs> of the final product. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.